So you might be wondering, Anna, why are you in your kitchen? Well, this is a party of one day because we're going to be looking at microwave cooking for one. <laughs> Yeah, this is an actual book you can buy on Amazon, uh, Microwave Cooking for One, and it's by Marie T. Smith. Um, it is amazing. This book is probably the best book, at least the best cooking book I've ever seen. I got it as a white elephant gift for Christmas, and I've been dying to dive into it and see how it works. Now, now obviously, I got it as a white elephant gift. I definitely thought... It as a joke but as I started reading it I realized these recipes might actually work so I'm going to test them out a couple of them um, I'm gonna make mashed potatoes or whipped potatoes as she calls them in here and I'm also gonna make a steak yeah and there's some crazy things in here steak doesn't isn't even one of the top crazy things uh, there's lobster like boiled lobster in here there's like flounder so yeah here's lobster thermidor so do that uh there's meatloafs there's rib roast like literally the weirdest things are in here that you were like how can you cook that in a microwave like it just doesn't make sense well i agree with you it doesn't make sense with our modern cooking utensils that we have but as I was reading this, I realized she kept mentioning corningware, specifically browning skillets, which I honestly had never heard of before. Well, I did a little research. This book was written in the 1980s, um, and it was when, at the time, corningware did produce and make browning skillets and other utensils that you use in the microwave to get you a nice crisp edge. So. They don't make them anymore. They stopped making them in the 80s as well. So I was born in early 90s, so that's why I had never heard of a browning skillet from Corningware. Did a little bit more research and found that you can get them on eBay. So I did what every millennial would do, and I purchased a browning skillet from Corningware from the 1970s to go in my microwave, because we'll see how it works. And I guess the reason why Corningware stopped making them is that they said that people didn't really know how to use them um, because you do actually have to put this in the microwave empty first uh, to get it hot enough to like sear whatever you're cooking. So people didn't know that and I guess they were unpopular because of that. But in her book, she definitely goes over how to use the browning skillets uh, she goes over a lot of stuff. Actually, this book is pretty well written. She spent 10 years of her life making this book. And well, yeah, the, the cover and everything is kind of funny. And you're like, wait, how do you cook that stuff in the microwave? If you really read it, you realize it might work. Uh, so I'm going to try it today and see how it does and see if it is crack up to all that a microwave can be. Also, um, I read this really cool article during my research. I'm gonna link it down below so you can read it too. Um, they also tried it and they said they work, but they didn't have the browning skillet. So I'm gonna do it legit how she says for you to do it. I'm gonna try to follow the directions as closely as possible. Um, so yeah, whipped potatoes and steak are what's for dinner tonight, uh, made in my microwave. So first things first, I'm going to make the potatoes because I feel like they can sit out a little bit. The steak, I'd rather eat pretty soon after it is out of the microwave. So yeah, let's get to work. So obviously the first thing she has you do for the potatoes is to wash them and to peel them. I actually don't have a peeler right now. I just moved, so I didn't peel my potatoes, and I actually kind of like a little bit of skin in my mashed potatoes anyways, so this is going to be a little bit more skin than usual. So not a bad problem to have for me, but yeah, just washing the potato and getting the little eyes off of it, so it is ready to chop. So to chop the potatoes, she says to chop them into half inch cubes, 
As you will see here, I didn't really do exactly half inch. I just kind of guesstimated. And it's kind of hard, to honestly, to chop a potato in to exact cubes since it's like an oblong oval type shape so I kind of just you know eyeballed it and went with like a general size I am chopping them a lot smaller than what I would normally do for regular mashed potatoes that I make on the stove top so that is one thing um, I guess for the microwave you should chop them a lot smaller because half inch cubes seemed really small to me so I just chopped them a lot smaller than I usually would usually I just quarter potatoes for for the stove top and then they boil on the stove top for like 20 minutes so honestly if this recipe works for mashed potatoes which we'll see in a bit if it does it, it would be a huge time saver so we'll see if it works Now it's time to put your potatoes into a dish. She obviously says to put it in a corneware dish. I don't have that, so I just went with a regular Rubbermaid uh, microwave safe bowl. And I just put all my potatoes in and then covered them in water. Um, she said half a cup of water, but I kind of put, just eyeballed it, put enough to cover them. And then they were ready for the microwave. One thing I'm gonna note is that she definitely says that these are for 700 watt ovens, but um, mine is about 900 watts. You can check on the inside of your microwave to see what wattage it is, but she does leave little blinks. So if you use this recipe and then it doesn't turn out right, you can like write in what your time it actually works for your uh, uh, microwave oven. So we'll see, I'll, I'll kind of guesstimate with my oven since it's a little bit stronger than what this one, this book is written for. Um, I'll kind of guesstimate the time on it, uh, just kind of see how long things will cook for, but we'll go from there. Okay, while, while the potatoes are cooking, I'm gonna start prepping the meat here. Um, she does actually give directions for the whipped potatoes that you can like have those sitting before you finish them while you're cooking your other things. So I guess that's what I will do. Uh, so let's get the steak ready. Today's steak brought to you by Target. <laughs> um, can we just talk about how expensive steak is, like uncooked steak at the grocery store? Like it's like the same price as if you were gonna buy a steak at like Outback. So we'll see if I ruin uh, $11. Actually, this was a two pack, so this was like a little bit less than the outback, obviously, a lot of it less. But still, we'll see if we'll ruin a steak for science. This is for science, right? We'll go with science. Potatoes are ready. Okay, let's see if these babies are done. So. Ooh. Yep, yeah, that's about when I would uh, make regular mashed potatoes. Looks about good. So we'll set these aside and get the steak ready. So for the steak, the first thing you have to do is you have to cook your browning skillet in the microwave for three minutes at 100% power. That's 100% power uh, for the 700 watt microwave. So I'm gonna try like two and a half minutes and then it'll probably be good enough for my microwave since it's a little more powerful. Um, but yeah, you cook it and uh, we will go from there. So wish me luck. Goodbye plate that I bought from the 1970s that's supposed to go in the microwave. Let's see what it does. So for your steak, she says to butter it with a tablespoon of butter on one side. I don't really know how you butter steak, so I just kind of like left my butter out at room temperature to like make it a little more malleable and just kind of like spread it over the steak like that. <laughs> it seemed to work fine. So I mean, I guess you could just do that. The one thing was weird for me, I've made steak 
quite a few times like either in a skillet or on the grill and it's like I always season my steak before I put it on the grill or or put it in a skillet so it was weird to me that she did not suggest to season it first uh so I didn't because I'm following her recipe but that was a little odd for me Put the butter side down of the steak into the skillet and listen to this. Oh yeah, getting it seared. And then you go and you cover it with some paper towels and put it back into the microwave. Here I was debating if I wanted to put an extra 30 seconds or not. I ended up not, so just put it for a minute. And yeah, that's what it looks like after a minute. Not very appetizing, I'll be honest. I was kind of nervous at this point, thinking there's no way this is gonna taste good at all. But let's flip it over and keep going, because that's what we do. So at this point is when she finally says to season the steak before you put it back in the microwave for the last bit here. So I am going to put my salt on there. I probably honestly put too much salt, but you know, I like some sea salt. So put some sea salt on there and then I put some other steak seasoning on there, like Montreal steak seasoning. She only suggests to put black pepper, but I personally like a little bit of a flavor to my steak. I don't know about you guys, so that's what I did. Put some flavor on it. And now that we are down to the last few seconds of the steak cooking, we'll go ahead and finish up the potatoes here. So I drained the water and now I'm putting in some butter. She said a tablespoon, so that's what I did. A tablespoon of butter and then um, I'm gonna put some milk in, but she says sour cream. So um, yeah, it's up to you what you want, but I don't really like the flavor of sour cream, so I tend to like keep it out of when I'm cooking. It does make cakes like super moist and stuff like that, but definitely I'm not a fan when it comes to sour cream. So I just go ahead and whip up the potatoes here. She said to use a potato masher. I don't have one of those. I just use a fork like I normally do for my mashed potatoes. And here I am gonna put some milk in it to make it nice and creamy. So just normally, this is how I like, honestly normally make mashed potatoes, just kind of eyeball everything and just go from there. So when it looks right, I stop. <laughs> for the last bit you're going to want to salt and pepper your mashed potatoes. I kind of eyeball this as well. Just put as much as I like. Um, and yeah, just go ahead and whip that up again. And then the last bit is to put these guys back in the microwave for just a second or two to heat them back up. Okay, let's see how it did. So, um, by the way, the corny wear stays cool, so you can take it out just like that. But I'm gonna put you down here for just a second as I do this. Okay. Let's see. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. And so the uh, last part is to put some butter in the pan and get some drippings on top of the steak. And that might be pretty good. Let's see. Potatoes last bit in the microwave. Gonna do 30 seconds just to warm them up here. And then we'll plate and see how it and looks. And there we have it, friends. Steak made in the microwave. So let's see how this tastes. Okay, I got my lovely steak and potatoes. Let's see how they taste. Um, honestly, it smells really good, so that's promising. Um, I did take a little taste of the potatoes and they taste like normal mashed potatoes, so I think those are fine. Definitely make those in the microwave. Let's see for the steak. Um, it looks to be like a medium doneness, which is good. That's usually how I get my steak. But bon appetit. Um, 
that actually worked <laughs> it's like really good <laughs> i mean it's not like you know outback or anything like that but like that is a decent steak and like i said potatoes definitely like a regular mashed potatoes i mean i made them pretty much how i usually do i, I followed her direction of cooking but as far as like making the mashed potatoes i kind of did on my own recipe because uh i prefer that i guess i don't really like sour cream and she likes sour cream in hers so yeah all right let's take another bite of the steak okay once again here's that doneness so maybe more on the medium well done not not terrible for <laughs> that but let's see Yeah, like I could really eat this, like as a regular dinner. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, uh, so buy this book and uh, be a millennial and buy the brownie skillet on eBay because they don't make it anymore. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and um, try it out. It's not terrible. Um, definitely quick and um, I could really, I could definitely make my mashed potatoes this way and the steak is not bad the steak is expensive though that's the only thing so that's the only downside I wouldn't want to spend that much on dinner each night but like for once in a while yeah I'm down some thumbs up for me thanks for joining me on this party of one adventure I had so much fun making the steak with you guys even though it was a party of one steak I feel like you guys shared it with me anyways and microwave cooking for one for this party of one thumbs up for me. Definitely go check out this book. Uh, she put her heart and soul into it. Uh, and Marie Smith did end up passing away, I read too. So this is like her lifelong legacy and like it really works. So go check it out. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.